Hello everybody, thank you for watching. My name is David. This is the Demars Coaching Channel and this is my question and answer video part two that I do every single Monday. If you haven't watched part one, please go back and watch it. Um, I want to welcome new subscribers like I did the first time, I think. Um, thank you. Welcome again and thank you for subscribing to this channel and helping me do what I do. Please everybody ask questions. Please, please, please. Please. Healing is basically understanding and learning what happened, okay? So please keep asking me questions. And let's get started with the next question is from 2018 Music in New Hampshire. Hello. Uh, thanks for always answering my questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Do you think there are more narcissists now because of social media? They're around every corner these days. <laughs> well... Narcissist would be narcissistic personality disorder, and that's not something that you're going to see immediate changes in society, and and not just from something that social media, which is fairly new, right, in the past couple of decades or so. Um, but I think you are going to start seeing those changes already from that. I think these kinds of changes are going to take a while, a generation at least, isn't it? And I think that. What, what's going on is that as a collective society, I think that we're holding importance in, in things that are more shallow and less human, right? So we, we're starting to care more or care less about being polite and manners and things like this, aren't we? On social media, we attack each other and say nasty things and accuse each other of nasty stuff, right? So... I think social media is making that worse. And I think that the internet and social media is such a huge change to humans and the human evolution of society that I think it has to get worse. You know, it has to get bad and then any benefits from it will come later, <laughs> right? Or we'll see later. Um, I think that's natural in human history. I do. I think um, with, with things that big. You know, things are going to affect us and you're going to see all the bad things first and then hopefully we'll iron those things out, get rid of a bunch of stuff like that. And hopefully that the benefits from this kind of stuff will start to emerge and be more prominent. Um, because social media, I mean, just look at like, look, look at Facebook, right? Just for instance, not to attack Facebook on its own. They're all like this basically, but it's so easy to pr uh, project or present how I want you to think of me. Right. And I'm happy and I'm nice and I have my best shirt on and I have my arm around my pretty boyfriend or girlfriend and I look at our house behind us and I'm going to post my vacations and the, and the cool things I've bought. And this makes it look important to everybody. So as you're looking at Facebook, even people that don't hold that important, right, people that don't care that much, that's what they're showing on Facebook, right? They're, maybe. They're not really showing all the great things that they really value, like loyalty and integrity and trust and honesty. They may not be presenting that on Facebook. They may pre be presenting their vacation with their loved ones that, were, that was down in, you know, uh, Cabo San Lucas and, and look at the pretty water and the pretty this and, and we, you know, we went on a nice trip, went to Club Med. And so when other people read this, they say, this is what's important in society. And if, and if I don't know who I am and I don't know what's important to me and I see this and I'm very influential, then I start believing that that's important to me too. And I start investing in these things. Hope that makes sense. There's my rant. We know that narcissism is on the rise, huge, generationally, it's increasing like a third, something insane like that. Coco XX from Virginia, hello. I vacillate between love and hate with my ex-husband. How do you purge 22 years of marriage? I recognize he is the energy of my narcissistic mother. If you just recognize it, you're not doing what you need to do to purge 20 years of marriage. And I would at least do that out your mouth to someone else. At the very least. Do that with a therapist, counselor, somebody. Talk to somebody. And it's better to do it with people that are professionals because you're paying for their time. It's uninterrupted. And you don't have to listen to how they're doing. It's, it, you don't understand? Uh, you, you, you can't go and purge this kind of stuff just to friends. Friends have lives. Friends don't know how to help you. 
most professionals hopefully can. So how do you do it? You talk about it for another 22 years if that's what it takes. Who cares, right? But be committed to it and invest in it, right? Express these feelings. Express these emotions you have and completely understand what happened all 22 years of it until, there, until there's nothing you don't understand, until there's nothing that doesn't make sense. And that's how we know, right? I'll ask my, my clients sometimes aren't sure where they're at. How am I doing? This and that. And I'll say, do you understand the relationship that you just were in? Well, yes. Do you understand all of it? No. That's where you're at. As far as healing from that relationship, we need to understand it. Okay? Go find somebody that knows this stuff and can help you understand it. If they don't understand it, they can't help you understand it. See? People say, oh, I didn't have a therapist, a very good therapist. Therapists weren't able to help me and stuff like this. If they don't understand it, how can they? How can they? Because we have to understand it. So you need a good teacher. And sometimes it's not always just understanding it. A good teacher doesn't just understand it. Some people understand it and still aren't a good teacher. It's a whole nother animal to teach it. Get the help you deserve. Get the help that you're worthy of. Mia from Stockholm. Hello, Mia. Thank you for telling me how to pronounce your name very much. It's important to me. Thank you. My ex would gaslight me until I didn't remember things or I was about to lose my mind. And Mia, you went into a bunch of detail of the things that he used to tell you and do to you. It was awful. I mean, it's just, it, it's the most psychologically damaging thing that we can do to another human being is ignore people that care about you and make them convince them of lies, of things that aren't true. Especially that they're a horrible, stupid, ugly, bad person. Oh God, it's just psychologically damaging. Can be for the rest of their life. Do all narcissists, both covert and overt, gaslight? Please take care and thank you for being you. Well, thank you, Mia. Thank you for being you, too. So do all, do all narcissists gaslight? I'm just going to say no. Every time I hear that word, all. No. Nope. So there's the answer to your question. I think you'd like to know more. Is this a covert thing or an overt thing more? I just don't like those terms. I just, that they just, if you notice, I don't use those. There's nothing medical or anything beneficial about them whatsoever, I don't think. Covert and overt. So, do all narcissists gaslight? No. There's got to be one that doesn't. <laughs> There's got to be. Probably more than one. <clears throat> Gaslighting is a way to get, for them to get what they need. There's all kinds of different ways I can get what I need. Isn't there? I need food. I need to eat food. There's all kinds of different ways I can do it. I can buy it, I can hunt it, I can grow it, right? We have emotional needs. If you guys can't understand why they're doing or why anybody's doing what they're doing, most likely they're trying to meet their emotional needs. They're trying to feel secure. It's things like this, okay? Why do they gaslight you? People will come up with th things like, oh, it's fun, control, sure. But that, does that help you understand why they're doing it? It doesn't mean. To get what they need. That makes sense to me. Right? So, you know, it, 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 it's a way to not be accountable for what they've done. It's a, it's a way to not assume any kind of responsibility for what they need to do. They, you tell them that, that, that they hurt you and they'll say, they'll find a way to, to convince you, no, I didn't. Or it's not my fault. Right? It's so that they don't have to take any accountability. And, and in the future, no responsibility. Right? Accountability for what I've done in the past, responsibility for what I need to do tomorrow or today. Right? No. They don't want to. They're not going to. So I gaslight you. I tell you, no, it doesn't really look like that. No, that person really didn't say that. No, I didn't do that yesterday. I didn't say that. 
It's just, you know, and I know you guys say, oh, they just have fun. It's just fun. Okay. I understand they get bored and they can sit there and screw with you and laugh when you get all upset. But it's, it, for one, there, there's attention, right? We need emotional attention. And for you to get all emotional and giving them attention is emotional attention. It's not healthy. It's not the correct way to get it. But they still need it, just like we do. But we hopefully go about it a healthier way. Hope that makes sense, Mia. Keep asking questions. Stella from Ontario, Canada. Hello, Stella. I have a question about my ex's behavior. After I left him, he gave me a demeaning phone call. Then he gave me a phone call saying, I want to be with you. Then another phone call saying, I'm a good guy. And then another phone call. I just want to be friends. And then another phone call. Or he unblocked you on social media and then he blocked you again. And then he smeared you to everybody. Why? 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 Why is he doing this? What is this? It's called impulsivity. It's from emotional instability. And a very unstable sense of self. That's what it's from. Okay? So I've explained this many, many times. So just to be really quick. Say... Say on my, in my happiest year of my life, say I'm really happy right now, okay? I haven't been abused in freaking nine years or something, right? And I'm really happy and I'm good and I meet all my emotional needs every day and, and, and I'm feeling secure in my relationships and all this stuff, right? And nothing bad's happened in a long time. So all the feelings I feel today are happy, right? Um, and... And I was sad yesterday, something happened, but I processed that, I went through it, and I feel all better, I'm not sad today. But I am relieved today because of that. Right? And um, um, I have a test tomorrow that I didn't study for all the way. So I'm a little anxious, I have a little anxiety, which is appropriate, because I didn't study, and I know that, and I'm gonna study tonight and, and make my anxiety go away, so that'll be good. And that's it, those are my feelings today. That's it. That's what my body's doing to the emotions are my body doing things. And today my body did happy and my body did relief and my body did a little anxiety, which I cured already. Not much today, right? Yeah. Here's your day. Here's your day after being screwed over and hurt and left for uh, for dead and, and they keep harassing you and your life screwed and you owe a bunch of money and all this stuff. Yeah. I, the, this represents all the emotions. Don't read the words. It's just, you know, happy, sad, anxiety, depression, glad, uh, uh, re, uh, relieved, and, 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 and mad, and angry, and resentful. And see that? That's more unstable. And this person will do some crazy things. This person might quit their job and move tomorrow, or break up with their, um, break up, or, or tell their friends to go screw themselves. Because they thought they were saying something mean to them when they really weren't. This person, I gotta do any of that stuff. Feel good. Have a good night's sleep. Wake up tomorrow's a new day. Just be happy. And make good choices, right? Just bad choices, good choices. Feel bad, feel good. Unstable, stable. I hope that makes sense. Thanks. Arturo from Mexico. Hello, Arturo. How do I stop thinking about my ex? I'm in therapy and zero contact, but can't stop thinking about her. What do I do when she comes back? What do you want? People ask me what I do. I ask, what do you want? I bet you don't know. Nothing. Right? We want nothing. We're not going to resolve things. We're not going to punish them if they come back. We're not going to commit revenge. And we're certainly not going to start diving into our relationship. And we're not going to have another relationship and start over. And Nothing. We want nothing from them. So why would we do anything? And why would we worry about it? Well, what if they call and, 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 and all of a sudden I pick up the phone and I'm like, hello. And they're like, hey, hang up. We don't owe anybody anything, guys, only ourselves. So be very careful what you do to you. Who cares what you do to them? Be very careful that you do not let them abuse you again. And that's what matters. That's it. They're never allowed to hurt you again, remember? 
So if you're pretty sure that they're going to hurt you again, then I would just hang up the phone, shut the door, turn around, walk away. What else is there? A letter? Throw it away. Don't read it. Text. Change your phone number. Well, my phone number is important to me. Not this. Oh, this isn't. Hope that makes sense. Um, how do I stop thinking about her? I hope your therapist is one that believes that we talk about our past. Some therapists believe that we don't talk about things that hurt. Shh. You're here to make me feel you better. I'm here to, you're going to pay me to make you feel better. And I'm going to do that by telling you, don't talk about the things that hurt. We're just going to ignore them. Eventually they go away. <laughs> yeah, that's not how you learn. That's how you do it again. You tell your therapist you want to talk about things that bother you. I tell my clients that are, that are really troubled by this, take a little piece of paper and you write down bad nightmares, bad feelings, things that are bothering you, things that are confusing, things that I keep thinking about and running over in my head. Talk about them. What is this? What is it? Oh, I want her back. You keep running that in your head, but you know you really don't. There's That's confusion. I'd be very clear. And the best way to be clear about things is have them all right in front of you. Right? Write them down. That's right there in front of you. Talk about it. Tell somebody. Now you're talking about it. It's right in front of you. Ignoring it, done work. Suppressing it, done work. Numbing it, done work. Thank you, Arturo. Good luck. I'm glad you're in therapy. I'm really glad that you're, you live in Mexico and you're seeing a therapist. That's incredible. Uh, suicide is, is huge on the rise in Mexico because, as you know, Arturo, not many people get help. Good for you for doing it. You're increasing your self-worth at the very least. I don't care what you do with that therapist. At least you believe you're worth it. Chris, in, uh, Chris is stationed in Georgia. Thank you for your service, Chris. My ex-wife diagnosed borderline. Th this is a horrible story, guys. Actually, this is really bad. So follow me, people, with this. My ex-wife, diagnosed borderline, left me after an affair with a female. Are borderlines known to not care about partner's gender as long as it's a source of supply? So please try to realize that borderlines do not know who they are. They do not have a sense of self. I think narcissists don't really have a self. I think borderlines don't know where that is. <laughs> um... So they do things that aren't like them. They, they do things that are weird, counteractive. I mean, just really, right? The, like, I, I, use the, the, I use the sports fan as an example. I'm a New York rank Yankees fan today and a, and, a, and a Dodgers fan tomorrow. And I, black is my favorite color and then white. And then I really like Italian food, but now Chinese food. Now I really uh, want to live here. Now I want to live there. Um, I don't like this job. I want to work there. And I want to break up with you and get back together with you. And I want to leave you and go with this person. And it's just instability, right? Like I was talking about before. And I don't know who I am. An unstable sense of self. Self is I identify with things. And you can even have identity crisis. Unstable sense of self. Another part of self is, is what do I value? My morals that I value. Well, if I don't act upon those morals, then I, I, I start becoming more and more unstable, right? If I say honesty is, loyal, is, is important to me, but I lie all the time, woo! I might as well just say honesty is not important to me, <laughs> right? But then you get down to, well, nothing's important to me. Well, now I got no morals, no stability, no sense of self. So is it common for them to, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm heterosexual today, and then tomorrow I'm, I'm homosexual, and then the next day I'm back to heterosexual. No, I like women again. No, I like men again. No, I like all of them. No, I, I don't like any of them. No, no, never sex again. I don't like people. I like animals. No, I like, I mean, yeah, of course. The borderline to me is they, they tell you how much they love you, 
and they give you a hug and then they look right over your shoulder and say, oh, it looks better over there. And then they go running over there. <laughs> and then the next day they look back and go, oh, I think it was better back where I was. I'm gonna go back. I mean, it's just instability, instability. So I go all over the place and you'll see it in locations where you live, in jobs and relationships the most. But let me finish Chris's sad story. So now you are now divorced and she is now with this dating this woman. You had yourself removed from your child's birth certificate. So if the two of you had a child, you thought she had a child, and then you find out he's not yours. So you had yourself removed from the birth certificate. Now she's apologizing. Now she's telling you that she's hurting and she's remorseful. And she's texting you, sending you texts and sending you old videos of YouTube videos that you guys used to watch, remembering the old times. And then you said something about she even accidentally sent something from Amazon to your house. So now she has to come pick it up at your house, which probably was on purpose. And so your question is, is do narcissists and these Hoovers, I'm sorry, do borderlines and them coming back and hoovering you, is this just them making you secondary supply or is this some type of borderline inept way to manipulate you? And I don't really know where you're going with that. But first of all, I'm very sorry, Chris. That's an awful, awful experience you had. And second of all, um, she doesn't know what she wants. She doesn't know who she is. So everything is better except where she's at. So, so it's all amazing. It's all amazing. You're so amazing. That, that's so quick. That lasts so quick. And then it's right on to the next thing. And then they go and date somebody else and their hormones fall and they come right back to you. You're amazing. You're amazing again. They, they, they value and devalue everything. And so it can be so fast. It's insane. She thinks you're the answer, Chris. She, she thinks it's exciting and fun, the old times, and she wants to go back and rekindle those old times. I, I don't know how else to say it, Chris. She needs constant, constant attention. And I mean constant attention. She's never comfortable. She doesn't know who she is. She needs people to tell her, what to do, how to feel, what to think all the time. The most important thing, Chris, is that we don't see these things, that we don't hear these things. And don't say, I'm so strong, I can handle this, who cares, no big deal. No one can handle this stuff. No one. So cut her out of your life even more. She's still in your life. Cut her out more, Chris. And I'm sorry, that is just an awful story. That that's really is awful. She, she leaves you for a woman, and now she's coming back, and she's, she's cheated on you with a man, though. I mean, see, she just doesn't know who she is or what she wants. She does, she's so freaking lost. God damn. And ask yourself who she is. You tell me. You write, no, you write down who she is. You write down what's important to her. Nothing. Jesse from Melbourne, Australia. Hello, Jesse. Why do narcissists triangulate? Why can't they just focus on one supply? And I might just say, well, because uh, attention. They love attention, right? But, but it is. Emotional attention is one thing. And you are never enough. We are never enough. People are never enough. We need to do this for ourselves. If I need validation from people, it's never enough. I, I get it from you and I just need it again. I need it from somebody else. I need it from more people. I need it from three people and then four people. You're never enough, period. That's why you feel like you're never enough. That's why they go and wander and cheat. But also, triangulation is a way for me to get security if I don't know how to ask for it. If I feel insecure in a relationship, which narcissists do, they have low self-esteem, so they feel insecure. They never feel good enough anyways. They never feel like they're enough of a human being. So, they triangulate. I, people need security. I need to feel like you won't leave me no matter what. I need to feel secure in my relationship with you, right? So I ask, do you love me? Can you tell me you love me? Honey, can you not go out tonight? I feel, I'm feeling a little insecure and you're going out with that one friend that, that 
you know, has cheated on her husband before. And so I just feel a little insecure. Can you not go out tonight? I'm sorry to do that, but, and I know you had plans, right? I have to feel worthy of that. Narcissists don't feel worthy of that. Plus they've never learned how to, uh, you know, emotional language. They never learn how to talk and ask for things that they want and need, you know? So they're just going to triangulate. I'm going to tell you about Lisa at work and tell you that Lisa asked me out on the date. Lisa won't leave me alone. Lisa keeps asking me for lunch even though I tell Lisa I'm married. Well, you're not really dealing with it then. You deal with Lisa and tell her to leave you alone. No. You know, that person likes the attention. They don't know how to ask. And, and, and the, 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 the degree of how much this relationship grows may not be important to them. They don't want to make it a better, healthy relationship. I hope that makes sense. Thanks. And I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Jelaine. Jelaine from Rochester, New York. Why are narcissists completely unable to forgive? Because they're judgmental. They lack compassion and empathy. And they have the lowest form of self-esteem. And they're shallow. They're judgmental. And so they judge themselves. Who is the biggest judge of us? Ourselves, right? That voice in our head that judges us. And when we become depressed, it becomes louder. It makes us anxious, right? We are the biggest critics of ourselves, always. And when we're not stable and we're not happy and we do not get what we need, we become more and more and more judgmental. Our brains, guys, were born caring about Staying alive so that we can procreate. That's it. That's our genetic information. Boom. Right? Being happy and things like this is not a concern of our brain. They don't care if we're unhappy as hell as long as we stay alive and have a baby. So it's up to us to be happy. We need to do that. They're judgmental because they don't get what they need. If I don't get what I need, I'm life or death, aren't I? Right? I'm in survival mode. If I don't get food, then I don't care about your feelings, right? I care about your feelings now, but take away my food. How many days does it take till I don't care about your feelings? Not many. I'll be the first to admit that. If I can live, 14 days without food, I'm pretty sure you start talking about your feelings on that 14th day. And I'm going to be like, oh, good, I just want some food. I don't care. <laughs> and that judgment is just life or death, good or bad, happy or sad, right? That's that black and white thinking. I'm in life or death mode, survival mode, because I don't give myself what I need. Security is most important things in our lives. And if we don't have security... We're in life or death mode and we become judgmental. That voice, that judgmental voice that we judge ourselves becomes very judgmental of people. Very. People that judge have extreme low self-esteem. Know that when people are judging someone else that they judge themselves. Which means they, and if you judge yourself, you're never happy. You think you're a piece of crap. Okay? Hope that makes sense. I hope everybody understands. Please, Please keep asking questions, everybody. This is a beautiful Q&A. Lots of questions, lots of good ones. Lots of return, people asking me um, questions over and over and over again. That's awesome. Keep doing it. Keep them coming. I don't care about repeat questions. We need to hear this over and over again. Okay? Don't be afraid. Don't be insecure. Don't be worried about what people think or anything like that. Who cares? Learn. You deserve it. You're worthy of it. Thank you all. Love yourself first. I'll